How do I not have a web interface for all of this yet? I should make a web interface for these. Brought to you by Patreon. Hello and welcome to Mellow Laboratory. I'm your host Thomas, the person who has dedicated their life to making expensive things relatively cheap and easy for you to make yourself. Everything I make, design and program is available open source and all I ask for in return is for you to support me on Patreon so that I can continue doing all of this for free. I remember seeing an ad for something like this on Instagram a while ago, but I remember thinking like, wow, I could make this for so much cheaper. Uh, so I did. Now unfortunately I can no longer find the company that used to make these, so I can't tell you how much it was. What I can tell you is that this upgrade only cost me £20, so let's quickly go over how I made it and the cost breakdown. To start off with I needed a backing to put the LEDs on because these organizers don't actually have a back. So I grabbed a piece of cardboard and I cut it so that it fits the internal geometry and fits snugly behind the drawers. And then I traced the front of the organizer onto the cardboard so that I can get the correct spacing between all of the drawers. And then I put a mark in the middle of all the drawers so I know where to put the LEDs. For the LEDs, I got a strip of 100 individually addressable NeoPixels, which cost me about £18. And then, this might pain some of you, I cut the strip down to individual LEDs so that I can put one exactly behind each of the drawers. And yes, I realise I probably could have gotten the LEDs with the correct spacing, but it was actually cheaper for me to get them a lot denser and just separate them out. It, it did take me like 4 hours to solder, but my time is worthless at the moment, so I went the cheap way. The full cost of this is about £20, it's like £18 for the LEDs and like 2 to £3 for the D1 Mini. Uh, shout out to my D1 Mini fanboys out there, you know who you are. But if you remember, I actually got a strip of 100 LEDs and this is only 60 of them, so I actually still have enough LEDs to finish off that one and still have some left over to do this one. So with just £20, you can actually end up do two and a bit of these, which is a pretty sweet deal. I want to start off by showing you the WLED interface. If you've never had the pleasure of using it, uh, I recommend it. It's so good. It integrates with Home Assistant nicely. It, you can do tons and tons of different effects with color palettes. You can do things like synchronizing your nodes that are all around your house. It's just, it does so much. I'm barely scratching the surface here, but I'm using it as a bridge so that I can send it requests to turn on individual LEDs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about my backend. I'm running Flask to manage everything just because I'm very familiar with it. And then I've got HTML, JavaScript and uh, CSS which I absolutely despise. All of the items are saved to a CSV file on the backend so you can easily edit it. It's human readable and you can save a copy of it after you finish your layout. Now we can actually go over to my site and ta-da! Yes, I get it, it's very basic, but uh, I kind of like it that way. There is a bunch of things I want to change, but uh, I'll go over those later. For now, let's just talk about what I have. On the top here is where we add new items. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, over here, we've got all of our uh, already added items. When you click the edit button, it comes up with a prompt where you can change all of the fields in case you put in any of the information wrong or just need to change its position. We've got the visit website button, which will take us over to where I got it from. We also have a search bar which I am super proud of where we can just do a quick search for something. Let me walk you through adding an item. Let's say I want to add this vibration sensor. So I'll copy the name, paste it in the name field. In the link tab you can put in any link, you can add a, uh, a data sheet link. I tend to just put in the Amazon link so if I need more I know where to get them. For the image I did want to have an upload local file option but that ended up saving the entire image to the CSV file which looked very messy so instead it's just a link to the image so if I go from like Amazon I can open the image and I can click copy image link and then I can paste that in here and that should show up sometimes it doesn't so you may have to look for a different image now let's talk about the position the position is based on what LED is behind the drawer. My LED chain starts down here at the bottom, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then it just goes up all the way to the top, ending with 60. And I believe my vibration sensor is here, which I think is 23. So if I put in the position 23 and then click Add, and then we can scroll to the bottom and we see we've got the image, we've got the name, We've got the website, which opens up, very nice. Now if we click the locate button, we can see, oh look, there it is, ta-da! 
Let's try a different one. Let's say we want to find my load cell. Oh look, there's my load cell, along with some other stuff. I have to reorganize all of this. Let's say we have to search for something. Uh, LEDs, please. There they are. Click locate. Oh look, there's the LED. Fantastic. Let's quickly just go over the things I want to add in the future. Uh, first thing, I want to get rid of this up here. I want this to be like behind a button so that it like drops down or expands, whatever. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm still learning. I don't want this huge waste of space to be here. I want these lists to like end somewhere here and they all can like sort of stack up next to each other. I'm also thinking of adding a stock count so that you can tell when you're running out of something as well as some kind of tagging system like for example microcontrollers and maybe like some quick access things. So like you can click resistors and it shows you all of the resistors. So I will be upgrading this periodically as I learn how to do things. If you'd like to help me, it's up on GitHub, link in the description, send me a pull request and I'll see if I can merge it. I don't quite know how pull requests work yet, but uh, I'm learning. There are a couple things I need to fix, like for example, these carriages to hold my resistors completely block out the LED. So I might print those in a more transparent filament in the future. And in other cases, I just have to declutter so with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend. If you enjoy what I do here, please support me over on Patreon. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you in two weeks in my next video. Uh, until then, goodbye. Uh, my back. Can you guys believe I made one of these before Zach Friedman? I mean, he says he loves NeoPixels. Maybe he can upstage me in a future episode. I'd definitely appreciate the shout out.